Hi everyone, today we're taking a look at some Android game controllers. Now I just want to say thank you to the MHL Consortium for sending uh, the green throttle out to me. I picked up the Mogger Pro on my own as it were, uh, at retail. Now what I'm really fascinated um, by with Android at the moment is its ability to not really just be about, you know, your smartphone or your tablet, but about being your games device as well. So, you know, do we really need an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4? in the near future. At the speed at which the silicon is developing on Android devices, the quality of the game controllers we're starting to see, beginning to think that, you know, this next generation of next generation games consoles and gaming in general, it's not going to be quite as clear cut as people uh, may have expected. I think these uh, second screen devices, or, you know, from my perspective, the first screen device, my smartphone, um, is fast becoming uh, a good rival to even the next generation consoles as they're currently spec'd. So, what do we have in these two game controllers? Well, they're very similar in their approach. They're both quite Xbox looking. Um, obviously the green from the green throttle and the Mogger Pro has very much the sleek lines you would come to expect from the Xbox. You also have the slightly offset dual analog controller sticks as well. Again, very, very Xboxy. In fact, I mean, you might as well just have taken the Xbox controller and you know, stuck a new badge on them. Um, but what's really interesting is the way these work. They use Bluetooth and they install a piece of software directly onto um, the smartphone which you can download from the Play Store. And then that allows the game controller to communicate with the smartphone or tablet or whatever Android device you happen to be using. Now in the case of the Mogger Pro you have this flip up um, stand so that you can actually place your smartphone directly onto the stand and it's kind of all integrated which sort of works okay. For my mind though, in most situations, I found I could really have done with the screen tilting back a bit further. It, it doesn't quite go far enough back for my liking. It maybe needs another 10 to 15 degrees and then it's kind of comfortable in all situations. But a lot of the time I found I was playing it like that. So actually having to tip it down further so my hands and, and wrists are rotating more so that my sort of eye line was directly face on with the screen bit of a weird one. Why didn't they just put an extra ratchet on it and let it tilt back a little bit further? Um, you know, for a £50 device, it's a bit much, um, considering it's not perfectly comfortable to use when you're looking at it. Now, where it does become a little bit more interesting is in these rubber grips that they've added to it. Um, the original Mogger kind of was more cut off around there and it, it re reminded me more of a GameCube controller or if you remember the Nintendo Wii um, kind of cube controller that they did. Um, I think it was called the analog controller anyway. And very, very reminiscent of that. Now this new one is much closer to an Xbox controller with you know these grips fitting quite snugly into the hand. And it's the same on the green throttle, but you're missing the uh, extra rubber texture on the green throttle. Now, what I found really interesting is both of them are very, very similar. You know, the, the kind of feel of the controller when you're using them, very similar. I found myself preferring the green throttle though. For the kind of in the hand feel over time, after say an hour's gaming, I found that the Mogger Pro was starting to weigh my hands down a little bit more than I liked. Um, the green throttle, however, kind of just sat really nicely in my hands and it didn't cause me any kind of aches or pains or anything like that. And it's strange because uh, essentially they are very, very, very similar. It's just the green throttles, these handles are just slightly smaller, I think. And that just, for me personally, just creates a better grip overall. The Green Throttle uses AA batteries. The Mogger Pro is a rechargeable and it recharges via a USB. Now, the Green Throttle is actually heavier. It's got definitely more weight on it with the included battery than the Mogger Pro. And so if you're looking for something where it's uh, purely down to weight distribution and so on, the Mogger, it definitely has better weight distribution. I mean, it, it's very, very, very light. Um, the Green Throttle does definitely feel weighed down. I would liken it very close to an Xbox controller with the AA battery compartment added on. So if you're familiar with uh, that particular um, controller from Microsoft where you don't have the, the, the battery pack as it were, you have a couple of AA batteries, the weight distribution and so on is very, very similar. Now, 
Game support is probably the most important thing with these controllers, and it has to be the out-of-the-box support, not let's download a third-party piece of software and attempt to get the game working by using overlay hacks and everything like that. Um, right now, the Moggle wins hands down. They have tons of games available. Um, roughly speaking, I'd say there's at least 40 to 50 games available now with Mogger support, including the latest release, Crazy Taxi, uh, which I was playing last night and just works flawlessly um, with uh, the Mogger Pro. Unfortunately, the Green Throttle is let down somewhat by an appalling selection of games. The controller itself, I actually prefer to the Mogger, but there's only about 10 games that support the Green Throttle which is a real shame. Even though some of those games are quite fun, if it, you know, a controller's going to live and die by its, its support on Android, and unfortunately, there just isn't the game support there from the developers right now, which is a real pity. I mean, what I think we need to see happen from Google's point of view, and actually from us, our point of view as gamers and consumers, um, we need a middleware layer provided by Google that allows all of these controller companies to hook into it, and developers to natively hook into it because they're building their games anyway using the SDK from Google. Uh, what we have at the moment is fragmentation. So really it depends on which side developers decide to go for. Will they include both games, com you know, controller companies' um, tools so the controller will work with their game? No, probably not. They'll pick one or the other. And they'll probably pick the one with the largest install base, which coincidentally probably has the largest number of developers developing for it. You can see how it becomes a catch-22 and a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mogga right now is out ahead, and they're probably going to stay there unless something changes within the developer ecosystem. And for my mind, that has got to be Google. They are in the prime position right now to say, we are going to take gaming seriously on Android. And here is a kick-ass SDK that allows all these game controllers via HID or whatever to interface natively with any game as long as it happens to be using the latest build of the SDK from Google. I mean, that's what we really need to see happen for gaming on Android to kick off in a massive, massive way. Because I'm telling you guys, once you pick up a controller and start playing something like Modern Combat 4, um, you know, start playing racing games, start playing Bard's Tale, you suddenly understand that Android is not that far behind when it comes to, you know, high quality gaming. Put it this way, it beats a Wii right now, and it pretty much beats a Wii U right now. In this next generation, when we look at the Qualcomm 800 chips, when we look at uh, the Tegra 4 processors, and we see the quality of the graphics and the fill rates and the frame rate and the texture handling and everything, uh, lighting as well, we aren't that far off the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox. Um, so, you know, it's not good enough really for us to simply say, oh, well, we'll have to wait for developers to incorporate this stuff into their games. Really, it's now for Google to force the issue. We've had a long enough time now with these controllers coming onto the market. The market has matured. The games are getting better. Uh, the graphics and everything are getting better. One thing that we still don't have is a whole ecosystem for running with the controllers. And that fragmentation is going to hurt everyone, gamers especially. Right now, if there's one I would say to buy, it would be the Mogger Pro. At 50 quid, you cannot go wrong. It works beautifully. But it's not the best controller. The best controller definitely goes to Green Throttle. For me personally, I find it a better, more comfortable controller to use for long periods of time. Which is an interesting conundrum, isn't it? So the better controller doesn't have as good game support. The not quite so good game controller has phenomenal game support. Where have we heard this one before? It's like the console industry all over again. <laughs> but, you know, my point is that gaming on Android, as I'm going to show you in a moment, is phenomenal. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how easy it is to use a Mogger Pro and with your Android device, and let's play a game. Simple as that. So the first thing I need to do is I've got my Bluetooth turned on. I've got the uh, Mogger Pro turned on, and I fire up the Mogger app, and we let it quickly have a search and it's found my Mogger Pro. Now, one thing I noticed is the HTC One locks on over Bluetooth substantially faster than the Galaxy S4, which is a real slouch. It'll spend, Galaxy S4 will spend half a, mi uh, a minute, around 30 seconds, trying to find the Mogger Pro. The HTC One just goes, found it, ready to game. It's a quite a substantial difference, and it makes me wonder quite what Bluetooth chip Samsung put in those devices. Uh, either that or very, very poor software implementation. Anyway, what we now have is the Mogger app, and within this application it will give us the various, oops, don't really want that one, it will give us the various games that I already have installed, um, as well as games that I can download. Great. 
So we've got Crazy Taxi here, and what I'm going to do, drop that onto there, clamp it in. Now, you'll see what I mean earlier about the screen angle not being perfect as it were. Realistically, it needs to kind of be there, but its natural feeling is to kind of sit there like that. And this is actually quite um, accurate to how I've been using it. It always feels when I'm using it that I want to tip forward and, and thus tip my wrists and so on, so that I can kind of see the screen direct on, like you would on a television set, uh, or as best you can anyway. And it doesn't quite work with this particular stand that they put on there. It needs to just ratchet back a little bit more. Now, as you can see, I've got full control using the joypad. So we're going to play game, arcade, play by arcade rules. And you see there from the glare that things are not quite as direct on as they would really like to be. Um, but the important thing is, check this out, Crazy Taxi with a controller gaming on Android. Now, if I wanted to, I didn't, don't have to have this uh, plugged onto the dock on the top. What I could do is use an MHL cable, put my phone directly into a television set, sit on the other side of the room with the controller, and game away quite happily. Um, literally using my Android device like a glorified games console. You know, one that costs about the same as a games console, but has a lot more functionality. So, you know, there are so many great games that have already been released. Pretty much every title by Gameloft, quite a lot of Sega's titles, they all work with Mogga Pro. Um, like I say, not quite great support for the Green Throttle going on out there, but it's not too bad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got ten titles there on the Green Throttle, but I mean, if I received one for Christmas or something, I don't think I'd be too disappointed. The game support does seem to be coming along from developers, but it's just not quite the large catalogue that the Mogga Pro has. But my concerns, as always, are comfortability over time, and the Mogga Pro isn't quite as comfortable a controller. So like I say, it's kind of, you've got two devices here. Both are really great products. I'm nitpicking, really, between the two. But it would be great if we had more unified support for the games. So that way, this game will work on the Green Throttle quite happily. It will work on any other controller that people happen to make for Android because, well, it's all running from the same SDK provided by Google. And then really it comes down to how much can they innovate on their hardware design, which is really where these game controller guys want to be. They don't want to be faffing around trying to get developers to support their hardware. They'd much rather just be able to say, well, there's a standard SDK, it works for any controller out there, and now we can spend our time making kick-ass controllers, not worrying about trying to get developer support. If you're in the market for one of these controllers, right now, I would say the Mogga Pro has it. It's got the better game support, the in-the-hand feel is excellent. It also has a HID switch as well, so it can switch over to hardware interface device mode. Uh, that allows you to use it with um, traditional PCs and things like that. Personally though, if you're looking for the controller which has the best feel and the best long-term feel in the hand as you're gaming, the Green Throttle for me is the better in-the-hand controller. It's the better physical controller, but the Mogga Pro has the game support, and ultimately, as gamers, we kind of have to say, we go where the games are, don't we? Yeah.